can't go from three day eventing, retire from that, and then decide you want to go jump racing. There has to be something there to, or um, flat racing, jump racing. You, you, there has to be a competitive edge there somewhere to, to want to keep you competing at the highest level in whichever discipline you decide to go in. So she's definitely competitive. And is that the gene that she's passed she, on to you? Yeah, definitely. But she's always watched sport, she's always supported, she's always been involved and won at the highest level, so I, she can't say she's not competitive. And she always reads, is not true. She always reads the sports pages, I mean she's always, yeah, she's a bit like us at that point, she yeah. starts at the wrong end of the paper, yeah. fl flicks back to front, so yeah, she always tries to keep up with everything that's going on. The Princess Royal won seven races in six years as a jockey, and while not at the same level as her equestrian career, the competitive flame clearly still burned bright. So when you were beaten in a close finish, you didn't go off and sulk? I don't think I ever got that close in a finish to be, to be, to be that. No, heavens no, not in racing. I was jolly lucky to be involved in a finish full stop. So, you, so the inference there is you did sulk when you didn't win in a three-day event? No, because that's a quite a different... Quite a different... Is it, it's a confusing two issues here, aren't you? I mean, a horse trials is a very independent, a very individualistic sport because you're not competing against anybody. It's a cumulative score, so you're, it's a very cold-blooded form of existence. You, you get annoyed if you do something wrong. It's got nothing to do with the results. It's got to do with your performance and whether you give the horse the best opportunity. Oh, a bit of a slither there, but she kept her head and kept her seat and went away very neatly. I only went down that path because. It just strikes me, and I know a lot of other people from afar, that you have a very competitive gene in you, it seems. And uh, is that, you know, inherent? Is that genetic? Or is it just that, I don't know, you just, you just accumulated it as you went through your teenage years and thought, I like winning, I want to win? Well, that's, uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't define it like that. Um, I thought that I liked being professional. I liked being good at what I was doing. And what annoyed me was not doing it very well. Not what the result was, but just not doing it properly. Because the inference being, if I'd done it better, there would have been a better result. And in my day, you were the person to blame, not the horse. But at least your horse and you got you to be sports personality of the year. So that was something you well, did. Mostly know. the horse in that respect. <laughs> and your third place went to Barry John. How bizarre an experience was that for That you? was quite bizarre, yes, you're quite right. Because not having really come across it at all before, it was a bit of a mystery. And in second place, you put Georgie Best. What are your recollections of that day? I think, treat with caution, it was a very extraordinary atmosphere to walk into, but very enjoyable, really. I mean, people were very nice about it. You voted as BBC Sports Personality of 1971 her Royal Highness, Princess Anne. Despite the fact they must have been absolutely mystified as to what I was doing there. <laughs> I mean, I remember who gave me the award, and that was about it, really. It gives me great pleasure, ma'am, to present your Royal Highness with the Sports You Personality Award of 1971. And when Zara followed in the footsteps? That was wrong, we really didn't expect that and the BBC Sports Personality of the Year for 2006 is? I thought she would certainly suffer from the sort of sport that she did and where she'd come from. Zara Phillips. Did you watch it on television? Long-winded for me. Did you vote? Certainly not. <laughs> Your mum says that she only watched the end of when you won Sports Personality, and she says she denies voting. Did you reckon she did? No. <laughs> she did. I know. And she went and watched the whole show because she wouldn't have sat down for that long. I reckon Tim would have done. Tim would have done. Yeah. Tim, Tim probably told her. Yeah. <laughs> what was going on? Yeah, he would have voted. Well, I hope. Um, no, I don't think she voted. In the general scheme of your life, at 60 now, is there any suggestions, do you feel, for you, that it's time to sort of just slow down a bit 
and just think, well, you know, what, what can I, what can I cut back on and sort of free up a bit more time for myself? Look around at the members of my family who are considerably older than me and tell me whether you think that's they've set an example which suggests that I might. Unlikely. <laughs> well, listen, we're talking to you on your sixtieth <laughs> birthday, you know, and we've penciled in a documentary for your seventieth, eightieth, ninetieth, and a hundred. So, yeah. I mean, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you as well, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I know, my family's not quite as fortunate as yours in that respect. Well, I don't know about that, but it's in the, the, it, some of it's in the genes, but um, I think some of it's just pure luck, to be honest. But having an, having an interested, enthusiastic and intelligent and funny family does help. Your family, when you were growing up, was almost unknown to us as the subjects. And then in the last sort of 30 or 40 years, you've become much more public property, mm. if you like. Is that progress? Was that inevitable? Do you have reservations about that? I certainly have reservations. I suspect the answer was it was given the way that technology now is, probably was inevitable. I don't know that I think that's a very good way to go. Actually, not so much from our perspective, but I think generally the attitude towards people's lives is quite extraordinary. Um, Do you mean the celebrity culture? Mm, it's not very helpful, I don't think, to anybody's lives. It probably causes quite a lot of problems along the line. Would you class yourself as a celebrity now? No. <laughs> not my definition, anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm open to suggestion about what a celebrity actually is, but in my definition, no. I think it involved a dog somewhere. Yeah. He bit the horse and... <laughs> he fell off because the uh, dog had come running out. Nothing like it. Yeah. <laughs> Tell him, pal. <laughs> Evelyn, what's happened to your arms folded? We lesson? know. <laughs> we know. Where's the handbag? We know. We know. Just a minute. It's a <laughs> Is your daughter a celebrity? Yes, I suppose more so in in the respect that uh, her profile has been gained through her own efforts. And that she embraces the media perhaps more readily than, than your well, generation she did. Well, she has to in 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 this context of, of her eventing career and the fact that she has sponsors, the sport has sponsors. So that's, you know, that comes with the territory now. Who in 2006 won badminton for the first time some 27 years after his first success at Burley? Say his. His. His at Burley. Who in 2006 won badminton for the first time some 27 years Ah. Oh. Listen, <laughs> <Lizard, also. laughs> Uh, next door neighbour. What was that like? What did you say? Next, next, next door, door neighbour. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Andrew Roy. It is your next door neighbour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. on oh, no. The whole general tenor of this is the way that you all live your lives in the, in the public mm. domain. And there must be times when you must want to shut off from that and say, please, let me crawl away somewhere. I mean, you could argue that I always have drawn a line but between um, what I call public and um, private, and I think actually it's necessary for everybody to do, I think, no matter who you are. And I think I, you know, I've been lucky in that respect that on the whole it hasn't been too bad. But there were certainly phases when you know you just thought, can't go on like this. And as a final question, because you know we're talking, you're running about, out of tape. No, no, we're not running out of tape. But as a final question, that looking at your schedule for today, you've got this, and you've got a garden party, and you've got a function this evening. Do you ever get tired? Mm, of course, but that's usually for different reasons. I mean, Surely most normal people would go, oh no, not the long horn, this, that and the other society again, or the short horn as it was last time, or whatever it might be. There must be moments when you go, oh no, not that lot. You mean when I was sitting next door, just grabbing a bite to eat and a cup of coffee, and I thought, did I really want to come no, in here? Well, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I could think of other things. Um, now, patently there are moments when you're having good fun at home and you've got lots of things on the go when you probably, you don't want to wipe sticks at, and, and set off, uh, up to, particularly not up to London, but um, in general terms. But that's down to me, that's my programme, I do it, so um, that's what I've decided to do. And as I say, they're all different. When you are off duty, do you, do you close the door and, you know, order a pizza in, watch television, or, or, or you know, or do you cook your own food? Do you know what I mean? Is, Didn't is I say that... something about drawing the line between public and private? Mm. That's where it is. <laughs> <laughs> She's definitely our mother. Um, you know, I mean that in, in the best way, that she's 
looked after us, supported us, taught us everything she knows and allowed us to learn our way as well and learn the hard way, I guess. Certainly learned from mistakes yeah. and uh, in that way she's let us get on with things, stumble if we stumble, pick us back up, brush us off and um, her advice has been invaluable. Whenever we may have got slightly above our station, she'd be the first one to bring us back down to earth fairly hard. And if we were feeling pretty down about something, she'd be the first one to be there to say, well, actually, you've got all this in front of you. Why, why are you feeling so, so down? She's just been there and given the right advice the whole time. If I was going to be a mother, that's what I want to be like. I would like to be as good a mother as she's been to us.